Shalom Akim, Salakia, uh, you know, the phone keeps going off abruptly. I had to remove some stuff from the storage. Lord's willing, it uh, goes all the way through and doesn't actually stop abruptly. I want to get this lesson out, going into knowing when to flee and to hide and, and knowing when to hide in the almighty. Okay, uh, I'm going to put up the other part. It's going to be a continuation, but this is uh, part two. We're going to keep it going. I was willing to say to find. All right. And I want to read this scripture here because this is going to give the gist of what we're reading about in the commentary where we, where we left off. Psalm 3 and 2. Many there be which say of my soul, there is no help for him in Yahweh. Bashim al Shai, Salah. But David knew that he had help in our power. Yahweh being the name of the Heavenly Father, the true and proper name of the God of Israel and his son who died for us and became a propitiation for us, uh, an appeasement for the wrath of the father, even Yahweh Shai, the true name of the savior that the believers will call upon in these last and troubling days and know the power thereof and be saved. And Lord's willing, this is an edifying lesson. Let's get right into it. No time to waste. Back in the commentary and it reads, the Lord have delivered the kingdom into the hand of Absalom, not Mephibosheth, the house of Saul, never dreamed of making him king, as Ziba suggested. And thou art taken in thy mischief, that is, the mischief that will be thy destruction. And all because thou art a bloody man, thus Shimei cursed. Bullet point two. See how patient and submissive David was under this abuse. The sons of Zariah, Abishai particularly, were forward to maintain David's honor with their swords. They resented the affront keenly as well they might. Why should this dead dog be suffered to curse the king? Verse 9. If David will but give them leave, they will put these lying cursing lips to silence and taking off his head. For his throwing stones at the king was an over or overt act, which abundantly proved that he compassed and imagined his death. But the king would by no means suffer it. What have I to do with you? So let him curse. Thus Mashiach rebuked the disciples, who, in zeal for his honor, would have commanded fire from heaven on the town that affronted him. Luke 9 and 55. Let us see with what consideration David quieted himself. Bullet point one. The chief thing that silenced him was that he had deserved this affliction. This is not mentioned indeed, for a man may truly repent and yet need not upon all occasions proclaim his penitent reflections. Jimmy, I unjustly abraded him with the blood of Saul from that his conscience acquitted him, but at the same time it charged him with the blood of Uriah. The reproach is too true, thinks David. Though false as he means it, note, a humble tender spirit will turn reproaches into reproofs and so get good by them instead of being provoked by them. Bullet point two, he observes the hand of Yahweh in it. The Lord have said unto him, curse David. And again, so let him curse, for the Lord have bidden him. As it was Shimei's sin, it was not from God but from the devil in his own wicked heart, nor did Yahweh's hand in an excuse or accentuate it, much less justify it any more than it did the sin of those who put Mashiach to death. But as it was David's affliction, it was from the Lord. One of the evils which he raised up against him, David looked above the instrument of his trouble to the supreme director as Job, when the plunderers had stripped him, acknowledged the Lord, hath taken away. Nothing more proper to quiet a gracious soul under affliction than an eye to the hand of Yahweh in it. I opened not my mouth because thou didst it. The scourge of the tongue is Yahweh's rod. He's, or he quiets himself under the less affliction with the consideration of the greater. My son seeks my life. Much more may this Benjamite. 
No, tribulation works patience in those that are sanctified. The more we bear, the better able we should be to bear still more. What tries our patience should improve it. The more we are injured or inured to trouble, the less we should be surprised at it and not think it strange. Marvel not that enemies are injurious when even friends are unkind, nor that friends are unkind when even children are undutiful. Verse four, uh, bullet point four, he comforts himself with hopes that Yahweh would in some way or other bring good to him out of his affliction, would balance the trouble itself and recompense his patience under it. The Lord will requite me good for his cursing. If Yahweh bid Shimei grieve me, it is that he himself may the more sensibly, <laughs> excuse me, comfort me Surely he has mercy in store for me, which he is preparing me for by this trial. We may depend upon Yahweh as our paymaster, not only for our services, but for our sufferings. Let them curse, but bless thou. David at length is housed at Behurim, where he meets with refreshments and is hidden from the strife of tongues. Ooh, that's the spirit. <laughs> Let's read on down into Psalms here, and I'm going to play this clip from Dances with Wolves. Let's read verse uh, five, because you got to remember, uh, David had his military men out there, and he knew Absalom was going to come with a military uh, plan or strategy. All right? But this is what, uh, and even that night after the refreshments and, and was hidden from the strife of tongues, this is what David purposed in his mind. I laid me down and slept, Salakia. I laid me down and slept. I awaked for the Lord Yahweh by Shemashai sustained me. Woo! Now let's read a little bit on. 2 Samuel 16, 15 through 23. Absalom had noticed, uh, had noticed, sent him speedily by some of his friends at Jerusalem that David had withdrawn and with what a small ret retinue he had gone so that the coasts were clear. Absalom might take possession of Jerusalem when he pleased. The gates were open and there was none to oppose him. Accordingly, he came without delay, extremely elevated, no doubt, with this success at first and that that in which we when he formed his design, he probably apprehended the greatest difficulty was so easily and effectually done now that he is master of Jerusalem, he concludes all his own. The country will follow, of course. God suffers wicked men to prosper a while in their wicked plots, even beyond their expectation that their disappointment may be the more grievous and disgraceful. The most celebrated politicians of that age were Ahithophel and Hushai. The former Absalom brings with him to Jerusalem. The other meets him there so that he cannot but think himself sure of success when he has both these to be his counselors. On them he relies and consults not the ark, though he has that with him, but miserable counselors were they both for. But really, uh, this dude, Matthew Henry, getting all into his feelings, uh, the man to, to really look at is Hushai. He was there for David. And he knew what was going on. He's like, we ain't got to go to the ark. We ain't got to go to the Lord for this because this dude is wicked anyway. All right, the Lord is speaking with David directly. And David told that man to stay there to see what was going on. All right. But that's the spirit. And he, and he uh, told the, the priest to, to keep the ark in the city. Don't come out in the, into the wilderness with the ark. Keep it there. So it goes to show you that David, through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bashem Hashem was already steps ahead. But let's uh, get this in bullet point one and then we're going to play the clip. Who shy would never counsel him to.